Region 4 is the southeastern United States, and that's the designation that the Environmental Protection Agency gives to this part of the country. And yet Region 4 sounds to me almost like something out of science fiction, like Area 9 or something, where it has a kind of impersonality, a kind of an alien quality to it. And so one of the things we really are trying to do with this exhibit is to personalize that, to make it not just something that's in Region 4, but a specific site, uh, because there are many of these sites scattered, 1,100 of them around the United States. Each one has a particular story. Each one has citizens that are impacted by it. And so this is our own Region 4 site. And the Cabot Copper site is something that's very personal to us. What we want to do is send out a call to artists, and we'll be doing this fairly shortly, in the um, early in uh, 2011. And we're going to solicit uh, proposals from artists, uh, proposals for pieces that they would like to do, paintings, photographs, environmental pieces, installations, whatever occurs to them as a way to interpret this material. And then we will select 30 artists to be included in the exhibition. The exhibition is scheduled to take place at the Thomas Center Gallery sometime early in 2012. So that will give about a year for these pieces to be um, thought out, for artists to have an opportunity to work with getting information, with doing research. And we do have a panel of scientists also that will be uh, available to artists to discuss various scientific features of the site, to talk about the contaminants on the site, uh, remediation process, any kind of questions that the artist might have, we're talking one-on-one -on -one with scientists, might help them to explain the processes that they're dealing with. And this is a kind of a unique uh, factor in this exhibition, is really putting science and art together and having artists and scientists deal one-on-one -on -one to come up with proposals and with installations and with um, material uh, for this exhibit. So we'll be working with, with both groups, artists and scientists, to uh, really put together uh, a very exciting exhibition and one that will be quite different, quite innovative. Another component of this is that following the exhibition at the Thomas Center, we want to put this exhibit on tour because there are 43 sites in Florida, a number of uh, Superfund sites, and there are uh, places in the areas that are impacted by Superfund sites where this exhibition might mean a great deal to the citizens in that area. They might be able to see an exhibit like this to be inspired to do something similar in their community, to try to bring artists and scientists together and, and corporate entities as well and government agencies to face these problems together and work on them and find some kind of common solution. One of the beautiful ideas that our chairman, Kim, came up with for framing some of these issues was to use five data points, and he focused those points around the four sacred elements of earth, air, fire, and water. These are mystical elements that have been a part of the artistic and the alchemical tradition. Uh, they are the ways that we described matter and the important components of matter before scientific inquiry led us to have a greater understanding of the world. But these ideas that we're working with these sort of seminal elements of Earth, and in this case, how Earth has been impacted by the pollutants of hazardous and toxic chemicals that have been poured on the Earth over almost a, a century of time. Wind, air, how have these toxins been distributed by wind and by air so that they've contaminated not just the site but the residential areas surrounding the site. And they've blown by way of dust and wind into people's yards, into their homes, uh, onto their lawns, you know, where their children play, where, where their animals, you know, play and so on. This is uh, a, a sort of a, a terrible thing to contemplate the idea of air itself being contaminated and spreading this contamination. Water. Our waters are threatened by these contaminants. For years, these chemicals were simply dumped on the site. They ran into 
uh, tributaries and rainwater carried them into the creeks, into Hogtown Creek, which was found to have enormous levels of contaminants in it before this uh, a halt was put to uh, pouring these chemicals out, discharge of these chemicals. Um, and water is both a wonderful purifying source, but it also is a way of moving material. And it, 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 water has a tremendous range in terms of where it can move material. And one of the very serious problems about the copper site is the contamination of the aquifer. And the fact that the city of Gainesville's well field for their drinking water is only two miles away from the Cabot Copper site. We need to be very aware of that fact and the fact that these chemicals can contaminate the aquifer and thereby contaminate our drinking water. This site needs to be cleaned up to the point where that is not a possibility. And that's going to take some very serious remediation and some fighting on our part to make sure that that level of remediation is actually taken care of. Fire. Many chemicals that are listed uh, within the, the list of contaminants for the Cabot Copper site are burning chemicals. They are things like dioxins and arsenic and so on that if you got them on your skin, it would be a very uncomfortable experience. You would definitely have a burning sensation. So these are the sort of fiery elements that we're wanting to dampen down and to, uh, uh, to get rid of so that they're not burning the earth and they're not contaminating the water and they're not blowing in the wind and uh, they're taken care of, removed, and the earth and the other components, the other sacred elements can heal themselves in a natural way. That's what we're after. I said five data points, so what's the last one? Foibles. Beginning with our ignorance of the consequence of our actions and continuing through our poorly coordinated efforts at remedy, human error must be overcome by concentrated human caring. That's the message we want to get out.